Hello and welcome to this special F1 interview with Lotus Development driver Carmen Jorda. Carmen, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you. So as we near the end of the season, how have you found your first year with Lotus? Well, it's my first year in Formula 1 and, I, and it's been a great experience. I have been learning a lot because for so many years that I've been racing, nothing is as much as Formula 1 and everything changed in every aspect. And what has your role with Lotus entailed this year? Well, my role in, in Lotus has been uh, basically three parts. Um, one of them is the simulator work that we do in the factory and the teamwork with the engineers and developing the car for the next races. The second part is the attendance to the races, that I have to say that is where all the real experience, where the things happen in, in, instead. Um, you learn a lot from that because all the changes, all the setups, the drivers, every situation that we have, um, you know, that gives me a lot of information and a lot of um, knowledge to know how a Formula One team works inside. What are the chances we might get to see you out in a car this year, say one of the older cars that we private test, get you some more experience in an F1 car? Well, that's what we're working on. We have a program. Actually, I was today, I'm just coming from the simulator. I'm going through my program of the simulator. And um, it, it's been a good year because, um, as I said, I've been learning a lot from the inside of the team. And my preparation, everything is focused on to test the car. So I just have to be ready for when the time comes and when everything, like the team, us, um, we're ready to, to go into the car. They're really physically demanding, the Formula One cars. I mean, how much have you had to step up your training from GP3? Do you feel ready to handle the Formula One car? Yeah, much more. I mean, my physical program has changed a lot because um, you have to adapt yourself uh, to really drive the Formula One and it's much difference maybe between uh, the training of the neck, the shoulders that I was training in GP3 is not as much uh, as in the Formula One because the power steering but there are many other things that as cardio resistance, um, stability, the core and as well coordination because of the steering that we have in Formula One. I mean the functions that we have to to, to learn how to manage it um, that's a, a really important thing that you have to, to learn how to do it. So that, that's why my, my physical program has changed a lot and is much more uh, rigorous. Now, we haven't had a female start a Formula One race since 1992. We've had Susie Wolf out in a couple of first practice sessions, but do you feel your role as well is helping to break down barriers and maybe make Formula One more accessible to women? Yeah, I think so. I think. Um, we are in a, diff in a different generation and women has been breaking barriers but not just in motorsport, in so many sports and in the in jobs, in everything. So why not into Formula One? And you spoke out in favour of a separate Formula One championship for women whenever it was murmured earlier this year. Why did you think that was a good idea? Well, it's not my job to defend if it's a good or bad idea for the sport because my goal and my target is to get ready for the car and that's my only uh, goal in, and my only focus in my head but if I hear about this idea I have to say that I would love to compete and uh, race there to try to win it because uh, I think it would be a great opportunity for women. Is there not a danger though that a separate championship for women suggests that women can't compete with men? It's not a danger but I really believe that there is a naturally disadvantage into men and women that's why in many other sports um, men and women have they have separate championships so um, I think uh, physically Formula One you, you know sometimes people doesn't realize but that's why the driver has to prepare themselves so so much because it's a really physical sport. Now we had a letter of intent from Renault to buy Lotus on Monday what could a takeover mean for your role at the team next season? Well all I, I can say that this is a good news for a team because a letter of intention from Renault is good news but um, this is something that it will happen in the future now it's like um, engaging to get married and you mentioned earlier in the year before you signed up with Lotus you had talks with another team so could be potentially see you you know say if you didn't stay with Enstone is there another option for you in the grid maybe in 2016 well as I said um, the season hasn't finished yet so I'm very focused on what I have to do with the team and you know all I have to do is to prepare myself uh, if the team tells me I have to go in the car so my focus is in the next six months to the end of the season so 